You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 28th of March and I'm Roland from Milford. The key economic focus last week was on US Federal Chair Jerome Powell's speech, post which there could be no doubt we are dealing with a very hawkish Fed. He highlighted that inflation was much too high and that the Fed would take the necessary steps to return the market to price stability. They mentioned the potential use of multiple 25-bit rate hikes in a month and that they could tighten beyond common measures of neutral and into a more restrictive stance. The US yield curve unsurprisingly shifted upwards at all key maturities, with the 3- and 5-year yields increasing 25 basis points. The US 10-year moved to the highest level since May 2019, and the Aussie 10-year bond also moved higher, closing at 2.77% on Friday, the highest level since November 2018. Remember, when bond yields increase, the actual price of the bonds fall. Despite what you'd generally consider to be a large headwind to equity markets, global markets were very resilient, with the NASDAQ, S&P 500, and even our domestic indices all compounding last week's gains, ending up 1.5-2.5%. to US manufacturing PMIs have released, which indicate the expansion or contraction in domestic manufacturing activity. The index significantly increased month on month to 58.5 versus 56.3 expected, indicating a strong rebound in activity post the Omicron impacted print we saw in January. Unfortunately, this wasn't reflected in US sentiment, with the University of Michigan's closely followed sentiment index dropping to 59.4, the lowest reading in a decade. Interestingly, a third of consumers expect their overall financial position to worsen in the year ahead, the highest record since the survey began in 1940. In the UK, headline and core inflation accelerated to 6.2% and 5.2% respectively, the highest levels since the early 90s. This was driven mainly by food, fuel and energy costs increasing, and the headline metric came in ahead of 5.9% expected. Turning to equity news, the key was really just the strength in equity markets globally, particularly in unprofitable tech companies that have been sold heavily over the past few months. Domestically, the lithium miners all had a fantastic week, with AVZ Minerals, Liontown Resources, Pilbara Minerals, IGO and Alchem all rallying 11-25% to last week. Telex Pharmaceutical sold off 18% last week, as a competing drug was approved by the FDA, causing analysts to cut their market share estimates. Unity Group received another offer to buy the business, this time by Myra, the Macquarie Infrastructure Fund that last year acquired Vocus Group. The offer was all cash at $5 a share compared to Morrison & Co's $4.50 bid. Morrison & Co also updated their exclusivity arrangement to include Brookfield Asset Management. Brookfield is a Canadian investment firm with approximately $690 billion of assets under management. Unity Group remains in exclusivity with Morrison & Brookfield but claim the board is reviewing the $5 offer by Myra. Unity closed at $4.75 on Friday. Turning to the week ahead, in the US, the PCE index for February will be released, which is the Fed's preferred measure of inflation. The market expects 6.1% total PCE inflation and 5.5% core inflation. Also in the US, we will get the non-farm payrolls data on Friday evening, plus the change in average hourly earnings. The market expects 475,000 jobs to be added and the unemployment rate to compress to a very tight 3.7%. Economists are also expecting wage inflation to accelerate to 5.5%. In China, the manufacturing PMI is to be released, with the market expecting little change in conditions. Domestically, there's little economic news flow this week, but undoubtedly it will be an interesting week given the current economic and geopolitical climate. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.